when did you get deployed to Afghanistan? Like, what year was that for you and your, your squadron? Yeah, I was deployed to Afghanistan in the year uh, 2006. I say I was mobilized 2005, but uh, showed up there January 2006, and we left there uh, right at the beginning of February 2007. And um, one year, uh, I was mainly based out of Bagram and Jalalabad, uh, which was, they called the Northeast Sector. So I was up around the, the Khyber Pass and mainly up... Uh, all north up in that where the, the Korngal Valley, which is uh, where we did a lot of fighting there. And then uh, Wanat, which was a uh, cop Keating. Uh, we helped put that in up at the Gowardesh. We went so far north. Holy mackerel. I mean, the mountains were up to 18,000 feet around us Ooh. up there. So, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a hell of a fight up there. Our average fight in Afghanistan was around 8,000 feet above sea level. Um, wow. So even the Apache has a hard time... Uh, yeah, there's not enough Bernoullis up at that altitude, to, you know, for the uh, the blades to, to bite yeah. into. The engines were, were not so bad, but, uh, yeah, there's just not enough Bernoullis to really uh, pull a lot of Gs and stuff. So, wild times while I was there. Uh, took a lot Can of you pictures, share a videos. Few stories for us? Uh, maybe like, uh, yeah. Kind of um, well, you know, it's kind of funny you say that because I, I had, uh, I've got a bunch. Uh, we did a lot of uh, uh, shooting when we were there. Uh, one that particularly stands out, one of the first ones that I was in was in the Corngall Valley, um, and this was in May, and we had, uh, we'd already been getting into a lot of shootings in the Corngall Valley, so pretty much going, it's about a four or five mile box canyon that you come in from the north off the Pesh River Valley, um, and then the, the base of it was around 4,000 feet above sea level. I'm going to say four or 5,000 feet above sea level. And then the mountains on both sides and at the end were touching uh, 12,000 feet. <laughs> and it was no more than about, oh, I'm not going to say two miles wide. So it's a pretty steep climb coming out of there if you wanted to go out anywhere to the south or other than coming in from the, the north. And although we kept getting shot at coming in, uh, coming in to the Corngall outpost, uh, we were not allowed to land there. The, uh, the Schnooks, were uh obviously they had to land there and um finally the captain that morning that uh, on this mission he said like you know what we're gonna sick and tired of getting shot at uh coming in now the, the corn goal so we're gonna go out the south end and i was kind of concerned i'm like you know it's already in may it's already getting hot we're gonna have a hard time uh climbing out the south end um just power wise you know with us uh, you know for the apache so he said well we're gonna we're gonna do this just to show them that it can't be done and we're like well that's that's a <laughs> hell of a way to fight a war <laughs> so uh we go in there on the first one uh the chinook lands i'm circling above we do not land as apaches because one there's no need to but two yeah to have an apache on the ground there it's just a prime target for the taliban to start opening fire uh he takes off to the south i take off uh behind him and uh, as we're getting up to the saddle that we're going to cross, I'm like, wow, man, we're going to be crossing it very, very low to the trees. And I'm low. I'm talking like right across the tops of the trees. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? That, that'd be a perfect spot to have an ambush. So I ended up, uh, I said, hey, you want me to uh, put off a couple of rockets in that tree line ahead of us? And, uh, you know, just go ahead and uh, j in case anybody's there, you know, put their heads down. And so, you know, the Snook guys are like, hell yeah. You know, so they tell everybody in the back, hey, the Apache's about to get next to us. And he's going to shoot off a bunch of rockets in front of us and all. So I'm like, ah, whatever. And uh, so we get up next to him, you know, and they fire off a couple of white phosphorus and all in there. And he's like, oh, man, it's cool. So go off the back end, you know, just come driving out of there, you know, 180 knots. Uh, go back, pick up the next round. Same thing. Go back to the, um, the corn gold outpost. And this time, though, I just topped off with gas and it gotten hotter. And uh, so when the Schnook was about to take off, I thought, you know what? I'm going to just climb above him at least another 500 feet just to get a head start. And so when he's taking off to the south again, I'm staying with him, but I'm above him. And I'm thinking, you know what? We're not going to make it this time. Hmm. It doesn't feel that way. So I said, I'm going to hug this rock wall on the right side coming up on the saddle. And I'll, uh, I'm going to try and catch some thermals to help hmm. me get over the ridge, over the, the saddle, over the ridge line and all. So I get on the right side of the Schnook, back behind him, about, about uh, maybe about 100, 150 meters. And um, sure enough, as we're climbing on up, uh, the next thing I see is uh, I tell my 
lieutenant in the front seat. I'm like, man, here we're stuck. I can pull in no more power. I yeah. can't turn to the right. I can't turn to the left because the, the schnook's there. I don't want to get in his downwash. And uh, I, I just hope we make it. And right about then, I see smoke coming off the tail end of the uh, – I see smoke coming off the tail gunner that was sitting on the back oh. of the Chinook. And uh, and I'm like, wow. And I was just about to squeeze, you know, uh, the radio and tell the Chinook, like, hey, man, you got smoke coming off your, uh, your Chinook. And right about then, I see – the red tracers going off <laughs> to my right. And I'm like, holy mackerel. I look to the right on that rock wall there, just on the bottom of it was uh, a bunch of Taliban were shooting at him. And they're all just blasting. And, I, and I'm going to say at least 10. Uh, I see them and they're just exchanging gunfire back and forth as right. we're coming up on them. And I'm like, oh, you know, crap. Um, so I was up the gun real quick. I look over to the right, right at them. And right about that time, the Taliban... They were looking at the, you know, shooting at the schnook. They kind of looked back at me going like, oh, Habib, <laughs> there's a schnook, there's an Apache. Yeah. And I'm even closer. Now I'm saying I'm maybe 50 meters away from that rock wall. And uh, I mean, I could see them. I could see their band dress. I could see their teeth and all that. They wow. swing their gun, their AKs at me, and they're just hammering away. I mean, yeah, they're shooting at me. Squeeze the trigger uh, with the 30 millimeter, put off a 10 round burst. It's all happening in slow motion. Yeah. And, uh, shoot the first burst. I'm like, damn it. I need to move the gun back to the right a little bit. Uh, then I see uh, the puff, quick flash, and here's an RPG, and it's coming right at... The guy did it perfect. He shot... He shot in front of me. Yeah. And uh, so he led me perfect. Uh, the problem was he didn't adjust for my climb. So it came, like, right up underneath my seat. Ooh. Went off to the left exploded about 25 meters or so off my left side. And uh, I'm like, damn it, you know, it's a, uh, you know, RPG. And uh, look back to the back to the right, squeeze another burst again, squeeze another burst again. And by this time we're flying past them and then uh, squeeze, squeeze, and nothing's coming out. I'm like, damn it, you know, <laughs> nothing's coming out. Squeezing, squeezing, get over the ridge line and pop off the back end. And by this time my uh, co-pilot's going like, where, 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 where? And, he had taken the gun away from me, and he was, that's why my gun didn't shoot anymore. He ah. wazed it up, weapon action switched it up, and took it away from me. And uh, so as we go over off the other end, I'm going, stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop. <laughs> you know, uh, right then, you know, the Chinook calls back saying, yeah, they've got several wounded in the back of their uh, Chinook. And I'm like, damn it. Um, so now we're driving down, you know, that back valley there. And, uh, and I'm telling him, like, don't ever take the gun. If you don't know what I'm shooting at, don't take the gun. Right. And, uh, damn it, you know, now we got wounded on that. So wow. uh, nobody was killed on our side. Um, it was interesting because I found out later, and I'm talking way later in the year, uh, I think it was around October, uh, we were weathered in at a Special Forces A camp uh, near that area. And when we were, I was walking through there looking at their maps, and sure enough, on that map, was the Corngall Valley, and they had all these little post-it notes saying how they had uh, all the different intel on the spots. And right there at that one spot in May, it's at the last known whereabouts of Ahmad Shah. That was the one that went after uh, uh, on Operation Red Wings on Lone Survivor. Mm -hmm. That's who they were going after was Ahmad Shah. And, um, and that's what I'd said too. I said like, normally when we pass any Taliban, they don't shoot at us. They hide. While these guys shot at us with as, as much as they did, uh, that explained a lot that that was probably Ahmad Shah that I was shooting at that day, that they were making it out of that valley. So, um, yeah, that was an interesting fight. And then I came home for R&R &R, <laughs> right after, you know, for two weeks of R&R. Uh, &R, and <laughs> I tell you what, I was still wound up after that I little fight. Imagine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a bunch of other fights after that also. It was... Uh, a bunch of fights uh, for the rest of the year. Just you know, rescued the uh, rescued uh, a convoy there in the Tagab Valley. Um, in my movie, we end up um, putting in the last gun battle that I had there in the Corngall Valley. That uh, escorting a general, a one star general, in there, and it came under attack. And I didn't have any bullets. Um, yeah, it was a uh, wild times there.